want to read to you a few verses of Scripture as a foundation really for this new series, this mini-series, and of course for the next 20 minutes or so of this service. It's in Joshua chapter 3. It says this in verse 1. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the, and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. This series is called Unwritten Rules, and we're believing God is going to speak to you. All right, you can take your seats. Come on, one way or the other, guys. Either applaud or don't. Come on now. This scripture has become like a friend to us at Audacious Church because it feels like since 2015, we have been declaring as a church that we, figuratively speaking, are on the banks of the Jordan River with the wilderness behind us, the promised land in front of us, the Jordan in flood, but it really feels like that we've been in a moment where we know that change is here. We know that, that like the Israelites, everything was about to change that they had a way of working and the way of living in the wilderness, but coming into the promised land, they were going to have to reimagine what life was going to look like. For example, food. In the wilderness, food was brought to them by God. They found it every morning on the ground called manna. And if they were thirsty, water came from the rock because the man of God with his stick hit the rock and water would flow. Now in the promised land, that was about to change where they would have to grow their crops and they would have to have their herds, they would have to possess land and dig wells or use wells for water. It was going to be a different thing. And we felt as a church for the last six years that we've been living in this prophetic word that we were going to have to reimagine what church was going to be like and how it was going to work. Now, in our Wake Up series, two years ago in 2019, we came again to this scripture, never been this way before, and we were declaring a season of supernatural growth, that God was going to supernaturally accelerate growth and expansion within the life of our church. And then we hit lockdown. But how many of you know that when everything locks down, God ranks up? He ramps up and he begins to accelerate. So what COVID has done and the whole lockdown season, with it, amidst all the challenge, all the, all the sadness and all the statistics, God has been building his church and he's actually caused us to leave a lot of the stuff that we felt was, was how we did church. And we've had to reimagine because it was... We couldn't do it. Like we couldn't physically gather and we couldn't, there was lots of things that we relied on to, in terms of gathering physically. And so there's this sense that as we are lifting restrictions and as we're coming into, back into normality, where we're interacting and gathering as a church, is that the landscape has changed. It's, it's like this is no longer, you know, the way it was before and we've had to do things differently. And so we're saying things like this. We have to do something new to go somewhere new. And so there's these unwritten rules, just like the Israelites had to break in order to step into the promised land, that we are breaking as a church. And what we're praying is that as we speak, that the Holy Spirit will be highlighting to you perhaps some unwritten rules that you need to break. Yeah, our church is 14 years old and like any new venture, when you start off, you kind of start by saying declaratively, all right, which kind of like you say it um, uh, prophetically, you say it into the future, um, what kind of um, church we're going to be. I had the privilege of marrying Pete Scott 
and Joanna Young yesterday, and they are the same at the start of their wedding. Yeah, you can applaud them. At the start of their wedding, they were saying, you know, we were, we were saying that their house is gonna be one full of joy and laughter, and it was the same when we started the church. Like, we're going to be this and we're going to be that. But of course, over the 14 years, what can happen, and the same can be true in your life, is the things that you say are a value, maybe not a rule, we wouldn't say, but certain ways of living, of course, they can be distorted or, or diluted or just change over time. And so now we're at a stage where we're recognizing as a church that there are some things that have become like rules, although we never said them out loud or wrote them down, but they've become like rules. And as Pastor Soph just said, it's time to break our own rules so that we can do something new to go somewhere new in this new season. So when I was growing up, when I was growing up, if I ever had something broken, I would take it to my dad and he wouldn't fix it. But what he would do is an old school version of YouTube. He would get out the Haynes manual or some other dusty old book on the shelf and say, hey, uh, I'll show you. Together we'll work out how to fix it. That was his philosophy. So rather than just do it for me, he would sort of upskill me, he would help me. And really this mini series is a, is a look behind the scenes. It's a lifting of the bonnet so that you, all of our church, every single person uh, can engage in this moment and recognize, and recognize that we all have a part to play in this moment of standing on the edge and taking a step forward and doing something new. So welcome to the, to the behind the scenes conversation. You are now part of the team, if you didn't consider yourself already. And so we're gonna go through four rules, four rules that we didn't write, but we think they maybe have evolved over time. And I want you to, Take a moment to think, is this rule something I live by in my life? Is this rule something we live by as a church that we never intended to, and we're gonna break it and move forward and step into all that God's got for us as we go forward? This week, next week, let's do it. So we're declaring this um, year to be our biggest year yet because we are in this, this new season of growth and expansion. And so... What we want to do is we want to really invite you into this, into the, the backstage, like um, Pastor Paul was saying, that we want you to know that what we, what we are inviting you into is that everyone is called to be a disciple. But what we need in order to house or in order to facilitate all of this growth and all of this expansion that God is going to, to provide for us and has in front of us is that we need every disciple to be able to disciple somebody else. So we need everybody to be able to, to lead somebody else or encourage somebody else. So the first rule that we have to break is that leadership is not for me. Now, what we did when we first started Audacious Church 14 years ago with 12 people is that it was all hands on deck. We didn't have the luxury of saying, are you a leader? We're like, you're breathing. You can do this because we need somebody in that position. And it's only with the, uh, the luxury of growth and having lots of people that we start to separate these two, these two things, discipleship and leadership. But what we feel that we have to do in order to step into this new season is that we have to just almost break that barrier between what is a disciple and what is a leader and just put them all together. If you are following Jesus, then you have the ability to encourage somebody else to do that. And that means that you are a leader. So everyone's called to discipleship, but everybody also is called to leadership. And that is going to help us. So leadership is for me. Yeah, so if you're going to screenshot a rule, don't screenshot the first one, which says leadership is not for me. We've replaced that with a better rule, which is leadership is for me. So get that on your phone, get that on your wallpaper, get that in your brain, get that in your heart. All of those of you watching online, leadership is for me. You, it's a new rule, it's for your life, it's for everybody in this room, leadership is for you. If we understand that, then we're gonna move into what God has for us with everybody engaged. Another rule that we have identified may have crept up on us as a church 
is this, is that I have to know everyone to be a part of the community. Now, when we first started our church, it was easy um, and definitely possible, maybe not easy, but possible to know everybody in the room every Sunday. And if someone missed a Sunday, the whole room felt it. If you were here when the church first started, just give me a wave. Any of the, any of the founding fathers and mothers in I'm the sure room? I'm sure there are people waving online as Definitely well. Definitely people waving online. Okay, so if you went to Mary Street, maybe not right at the very beginning, but you were in our previous building, give me a wave. Give us a wave in the chat if you were at Mary Street. And so you may remember what it was like being able to sort of know everyone in the room and feel like this is my church. And what's possibly happened over time is that you could have moved to a place or maybe you've only recently joined our church. We know that our church has grown during lockdown. And so there's people in the room and watching online and you're new to our church. You don't know what Mary Street is. You're asking, who's she? And uh, you're thinking, I didn't know we were 14 years old. Maybe you were there and you've gone on this journey, but either scenario and any in between can leave you possibly in a place where you think, gosh, I, I don't know if I can find community in this giant hall or in this big, in inverted commas, I don't know why we would start using this word, but organization, when really what we have to recognize is this is a place where you can and should feel at home. Sunday is a place where you can find community, but outside of Sunday, we have done so much work over the last 14 years to try and get people to understand that outside of a Sunday is another place where we pour loads of time and effort and energy into trying to create opportunities for you to connect with other people and feel and know and be, not just feel, be part of the family. Now, you could be in our church right now here in Manchester. You could be watching online and you could be saying, well, yeah, I kind of hear you, but I feel a little bit, uh, a little bit perhaps disconnected or like I don't know everybody. Well, what might need to happen instead of just making the decision or drawing the conclusion, well, maybe this church isn't for me. No, we need to wake up to what God is doing, get on the bus, if you like, with what he's doing, tune in to what his agenda is at this season, at this season in the life of our church, especially as we step into or out of COVID restrictions and into the new um, plan that God has for us. We've got to recognize that maybe what needs to happen is we, is we need to grieve a bit. There's, there's potentially a grieving that needs to happen of one way of it being to move into a new way of it being. And it's not that the other way is better or so on and so forth. It's just, this is what God is doing. And so it's time to, uh, to move forward. You've got some thoughts on that grieving thing, haven't That's you? That's right. So you might come from a, a, a church um, previous to coming to Audacious where you knew everybody and Coming into a, into a church like ours, you might think, oh, I, I just, I don't know how I can do community in here because I don't feel known or I don't know um, the people who are even sat around me. But we're just trying, we're encouraging you that community is found within the small in an audacious church. And I, as a, as a senior pastor and also Glenn um, along with me, there was a time when we had to grieve the fact that we won't know everybody in the life of our church as well as we would like. But that is something that comes with growth, which is what God is all about. And so we find community in the small, knowing that God is actually at work bringing people into the life of the church because they're needed and because we, we need them all hands on deck to step into everything that God has for us. Yeah, small is like an unfamiliar word to us as a church. Like when did we ever do anything small or even say the word small? But what we've realized is that small is the new big and big is the new small. They, these terms are now not opposed to each other or enemies, but in actual fact, we work really hard. That's why we have a connections team and uh, we have connections lounges and the hub and different things like that and new versions of them for during this season. But we're working really hard to try and make sure everybody in the room, in a big room, 
can feel as though they know some people and they connect with some people. And also, not just on a Sunday, like we would love you to come on a Sunday. There are definitely ways and people waiting to meet you and connect with you on a Sunday. But as well, we have a whole menu of small groups that you can connect with. They're not just one size fits all small groups. They're on different nights and um, focusing on different things and for different stages of life. And you could be super young, super old or anywhere in the middle. And let's switch out that rule for um, what we said was, I have to know everyone to be part of the community for, I can feel at home here. I can feel at home here is the new rule or the old rule that we're going back to. That's right. And the next unwritten rule is that I have to, um, that leaders are people I know. So when we were at first at a young church, this is the way leadership happened. This is the way we invited people into leadership, is that we as pastors would know you, we would see you every Sunday, and we would, through relationship, be able to track you, we would be able to see how you grew, we would be able to encourage you, and we would be able to see, this is where this person thrives, and this is where this person seems to fit, and we would be able to offer you responsibility or an opportunity. And through that relationship and through that, um, that time, you would be growing and, and you'd find yourself as a life group leader and you might find yourself as a team leader. Or, and that's the way it happened. It happened because you were visible and because you were known and because we had that ability of time. We realized that in this new season, that does not work because we don't have the same visibility. It's slow, it's clunky, and we miss people. And we know that every person who calls Audacious Church their home, we see you as a gift from God to us, that you are here because you are needed, because you are valued, and because you bring something that is needed and important and valuable to us. And so we have to work a different way because we, we have, with growth and with, with you know, with the, where we are as a church now and stepping into more growth and more expansion, we have to overcome this challenge. And now let me just um, say what the challenges are. The identification challenge. Because we don't have the same visibility that we would have in a smaller context or when we were younger as a church, we don't have that visibility anymore then we have to overcome that identification challenge and be able to identify people who are not necessarily visible to the senior leadership, but they're visible to somebody within the life of our church, a leader within the life of our church. So the second um, thing that we're overcoming is the promotion challenge. Because we haven't got, the senior leaders don't have that luxury of seeing you in your life group or seeing you how how you are growing and where you thrive, then we need to overcome that, that somebody can be seeing that and somebody can be developing you and be in relationship with you. And the third thing is the invisibility challenge or what we call the invisibility challenge. And this is the challenge that there are gifts, that there are gifts of people in the life of our church that may come from a church background where it is not expected that they would step into some sort of responsibility or some sort of leadership. You may come from a church background where women were not expected to take um, any form of leadership or responsibility, and therefore you would not engage or you wouldn't put yourself forward or you would not have that expectation that we would have that to say, no, you are a gift and we wanna grow you as a disciple of Christ and also in leadership. Or you might come from a church a tradition where the pastor did everything and that the congregation were really just to there to watch him do everything. But we wanna say that that's not, that's not our church. We need everybody, all hands on deck, to be taking weight and responsibility and be able to encourage somebody else in their relationship with God. So that's, that's that challenge and that unwritten rule that we need to break. Yeah, so any reason 
anything that may have held you back or you thought I'm not ready yet or they don't want me or whatever it might be that's held you back that's kind of got this unwritten rule in your heart, swap it out for a new rule or maybe the old rule that we're going back to which is I can grow as a leader here. I can grow as a leader here. The fourth one and the last one before we pray is rule number four is the platform is the prize. The platform, the stage, the mic, the staff role is the ultimate prize. And really what we have to understand, especially in a celebrity-driven, social media saturated culture that really celebrates the seen and, the, uh, and not the unseen, is that we have to recognize that to have this stage or any stage or any narrow, um, narrow boundary of a goal is really limiting to you as a person and to us, therefore, as a church. And if we just think that, you know, I'll serve God if I get an opportunity on the stage or I'll serve God when I'm on staff at the church or I'll serve God when someone gives me a title or a badge or something, then what we're actually doing is allow an unwritten rule that we never said and you never really agreed to, but we live and are limited by. And what we have to do is go, you know what? I am needed here. This is a, some, a place for me. And I'm not going to wait until someone comes, puts me on the front cover of the church magazine. I know we don't have a church magazine. I'm just saying, metaphorically speaking. Until your name's on the website or your pictures in, in, the, in the profiles or whatever it is, because the platform is not the prize. Serving God with everything you have is the prize. Colossians chapter three says this, do your best, work from the heart for your real master, for God, confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. The new rule or the old rule that we're going back to is He is the prize. He is the prize. And so as we come into land, we really need to talk about what you need to do now, which is take some responsibility. That's right. This is community. We grow and we thrive within community. Church is a family and everybody is needed. Everybody is valuable. Everybody has a place. Everybody brings something to the table that is absolutely needed. But we need everybody to take personal responsibility to engage. You see, when you, when you move into a new community as a family or, a, or if you move to another city, there are services there that you need. There are doctors and there are dentists. And what you do without thinking is that you go and you find a doctor and you go and register with a dentist. Those services don't come to find you. You go and you engage so that you can receive from those services. And we need you to do the same. We need you to identify yourself. If you're feeling unknown or you are feeling like this is my home and I want to engage, then we need you to, to register, if you like. Register in the community that is Audacious Church and identify yourself because we need to know you and we need to see you and we need to grow you and develop you in this place. That's our heart. Yeah, let's just go back to Joshua, those verses right at the beginning of, of this message where the children of Israel are on the edge about to do something. And if we look at this famous verse in Joshua 24, this is him literally personifying this moment that Pastor Sof's just mentioned because he says, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, he's talking to everyone else. He says, then choose for yourselves this day who you will serve. In other words, guys, you can do what you want. I know what I want you to do, but ultimately it's down to you, he says, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me, he's basically saying, look, as for me and my household, where I have authority, the, the, the experience, the culture, the environment that I'm responsible for, this little circle around me and my life, we will serve the Lord. Absolutely. And so that nervous, that nervous walk across 
the car park to one of the gazebos outside where you kind of go, uh, hey, um, I wonder if I could join the team. That sort of like slightly awkward, don't know how to start the conversation with a person that stood on their own and you think, well, they look like they don't know anyone and I feel like I don't know anyone, so I'm just gonna go over and risk the rejection. That moment is literally this moment that Joshua says in this verse. And we would print this verse and put it on our fridge and have it on a fridge magnet and put it in the mirror. We would do everything with this verse, but you get the chance now to be that verse, to say, I don't know what everyone else is doing, but as for me, my household, my mates, my small, we're gonna engage. And so there's three things that you can do. Those of you watching online, you can visit our website, audaciouschurch.com forward slash hello literally is a place where you can tell us who you are. Maybe you've been attended for weeks, months, even years, but you've never really engaged in the life of the church. Then let us know who you are and we would love, we've got all sorts of things in place to get in touch with you, send you information, give you a whole menu of things you can do, audaciouschurch.com forward slash hello. We've also got audaciouschurch.com forward slash small groups. If you're like, I kind of been coming to the church, but my friendship group, I'd, I've not quite got any traction with that. Listen, join a small group, audaciouschurch.com forward slash small groups and also forward slash teams, okay? Audaciouschurch.com forward slash teams. When you're saying, you know what, I wanna, I, I wanna serve, I wanna lead. I, I'm not just a disciple, I'm a leader because they're one and the same. We're breaking that rule and I wanna be involved. So go to those pages on the website or just email us, hello at audaciouschurch.com with anything you want and we will be back in touch with you as soon as we can in the next 24 hours or so to say, all right, let's do this. And the ready, steady go is now. If you're in the room, then out on the car park, we have our newly evolving gazebo village. Each week, there's an extra gazebo for something else. The reason why is because we're so desperate, aren't we, Pastor, to get people connected in some way. And so there's a gazebo for teams, a gazebo for small groups, a gazebo if you've got a bunion, a gazebo. There isn't a gazebo for that. But what I'm saying is, whatever you need, we are falling over ourselves to say, come on, let's break these rules. If you feel disconnected, it could be. It could be that there's a rule that we didn't write you didn't write, you never signed up for, we never asked you to, but for some reason it's holding you back. And just like Joshua and his family and the children of Israel on the edge of breakthrough, it's time for every single person to engage. That's right. Um, I've heard it, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times and I'm sure Glenn is the same, is that people come into the context of our church and immediately say, I'm not needed here. They don't need me. And I just wanna say categorically, that is untrue. We need everyone. If God has put it on your heart to make Audacious Church your home, then you are needed here. All hands on deck. We're stepping into a supernatural season of growth and expansion. And we need everybody. Part of community, growing, thriving and encouraging somebody else to do the same. We love you, Church.